Potassium is much more lethal than creatinine and only few patients know about it. That is why today I, Dr. Purudhavan, takes immense pleasure in guiding you through each and every detail where I will be talking to you about what is potassium, what role does it play in individual's body and why it is proved to be extremely harmful for chronic kidney disease patient. Starting from the basics, potassium is a mineral that is not produced by the body via natural process. This means that an individual can only regulate their potassium level with the help of external factors. With helping the nerve and muscle functioning of our body, it becomes essential to keep the level of this mineral under control at all the times. Let me make it even simpler. If the level of potassium in an individual's body is normal, muscle will get regular flow of power to keep the body in healthy functioning state. Vice versa, if the same levels are not normal, it can lead to nausea, weakness and even slower pulse rate. Having said that, it would not be wrong to state that the increasing level of potassium in a kidney patient can prove to be more harmful as compared to increasing level of creatinine. As we all know that, heart is responsible for pumping blood every second to all our organs. Therefore, if the level of potassium are on the higher side, then it will sure be impacted in a huge way which can ultimately lead to a heart attack. But what does our kidney have to do with the increasing level of potassium in an individual's body? Do not go on the small size of this bean shaped organ as it performs one of the most important functions to keep you alive. Try to think of our body as a house. Every morning it becomes essential to clean it out. Now with our body doing the exact same thing, kidney are responsible for cleaning out all the waste material that get accumulated. Therefore it is highly important for this organ to function properly so that it can regularly flush out all the waste from an individual's body. The relationship between kidneys and potassium is very direct. Let me explain. Decrease in kidney functioning will lead to increase in potassium level as the waste material which will not be flushed out regularly and in a normal fashion. So it becomes very important for a kidney failure patient to control the amount of potassium in their body as it can directly lead to a lot of health issues. But unlike creatinine and urea, both of which are produced in the body, potassium comes directly from the food we eat. That's why I advise all CKD patients to only consume food items with lower potassium levels. But remembering what all to eat and what to avoid can be troublesome. Let me quickly go through all the food items that an individual should eat and at the same time avoid to keep the potassium level in control. A personal rule that I always go by and even advise my patient to adhere is to absolutely say no to brown rooty vegetables like potato, sweet potato, taro root and green leafy vegetables like spinach, pigweed, fenugreek, mustard, coriander, mint as they contain potassium in high amount. Coming to the food items that are safe to consume by kidney failure patient, all the vegetables that grow on plant or creeper are absolutely safe like cucumber, bottle grout, bitter grout, okra. Also in the terms of fruit, you have to be extremely careful as some of them may end up increasing your potassium level. Banana, kiwi, avocado, dry fruit, date along with specific citrus fruit should be strictly avoided. Instead of these, you can munch on fruit like apple, papaya, guava, chiku in a limited quantity, which is approximately one cup. Another rule that I always tell my patient to follow is to not to consume any type of juice as it can directly contribute the increase in the level of potassium. The logic behind this is very straightforward. For example, if an individual is consuming one glass of apple juice while suffering from CKD, it will have severe consequences as almost 3 to 4 apple will be processed 
to get that one glass of apple juice. Logically speaking, a kidney failure patient therefore will be consuming all the potassium from those four apple that will be present in one glass, ultimately pushing the level of potassium to a higher range. With this, there are few other items which are rich in potassium and should be avoided. First would be low sodium salt, which is generally consumed to keep the blood pressure levels in control. But what people don't know about is that 15% more potassium is added to keep the sodium level low in the salt. That's the patient would be unknowingly consuming. Secondly, for kidney failure patient, I will highly recommend that jaggery should be avoided at all the times. Let's apply the apple logic here as well. Jaggery is obtained by processing sugar canes. Concentrated version of sugar cane will contain potassium in large amount and therefore even having a small piece will ultimately lead to increase in potassium level by a high number. Instead, refined sugar can be consumed as an alternative whenever a kidney failure patient wants to eat something sweet. According to me, if an individual suffering from CKD keeps all the things in mind and follow my instruction carefully, then it is very much possible to get the potassium level down. Still, if you see that even after following all these rules, the potassium level are not decreasing, I would like to then talk about something known leaching. Leaching is a process by which we can get rid of potassium from food that is to be consumed. No matter how relieving and good this sound, I will not advise CKD patient to adopt this as an regular habit. But why? The process of leaching is no doubt an easy way to keep your potassium level in control. But slowly and steadily, other useful mineral and vitamins of the body are sucked away leading to multiple deficiencies, not making it a very healthy option after all. But if an individual wants to carry out the process, it is my duty to explain all of you how the process of leaching is conducted. Let me take potato for an example here. High in potassium and a staple food for almost everyone on planet Earth. I often see my patient complaining about how tough it is for them to absolutely avoid it all the times. Therefore, the process that I believe works the best has three simple steps, which an individual needs to follow for a successful process of leaching. The first step is to peel the vegetable completely. Secondly, make sure that you cut it in a small cube of approximately one inch. Lastly, for the process to be completed, the vegetable to be soaked in cold water for approximately four to five hours before it can be ready to hop on the pan. With all the food items that are to be avoided, I would like to mention Himalayan and sea salt as well. Both of them are highly beneficial for controlling blood pressure. But if the potassium level are high, it is my advice to switch to common salt. So if we wind all this up, it would be safe to say that any patient who is suffering from chronic kidney disease should avoid eating any food substance with high amount of potassium concentration. I hope this video provides all the answers to your question but if you still have any query left, you can ask in our comment section and my team would be more happy to solve it. The next topic for our video is what should be the diet for a CKD patient in winters. So stay tuned for that. Till then, take care and wishing you a Merry Christmas.